so glad that you've decided to join us for worship this morning on our digital platform. This morning, we're going to be continuing our sermon series in the Sermon on the Mount that focuses on God's vision for his kingdom and what it looks like for the Lord to rule and reign in and over our lives as his disciples. If this is your first time worshiping with us, a special welcome to you. We encourage you to click on the links below and to visit our church website at nmbchurch.org to learn about how God is working through his church at New Mammoth and how you can be a part of worshiping the Lord in this community, whether it be through using your gifts to serve, to worship through giving, or taking advantage of our many ministries and resources. And so with all that being said, we are so glad you joined us this morning. And so now let's all do what we've come here to do. Worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> See, we just needed a little drizzle. That's all. That's all that was. It's all gone now. See, Pastor Nick's sermon it is so hot, we needed to cool things off. That's what that was about, okay? But we're ready to go now. Hey, welcome to NMBC. It is so great to be together to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hey, if you haven't yet gotten our NMBC app, our church app, we encourage you to go ahead and download that on your smartphone. Uh, or you can go ahead and go to our website, which is uh, nmbchurch.org. And you have we have a digital online bulletin there for you. We have all the lyrics to the worship songs on there and everything you need to know about New Mammoth as a church. And so we encourage you to, to make sure you have that. It is a wonderful resource as a connection card if you're new. Uh, like I said, song lyrics, our, our prayer list, uh, lot of, lots of good stuff on there. Hey, if you need to use the restrooms, that building over there is our family ministry center. And so uh, the, the, the doors are propped open, uh, are unlocked. Uh, we just ask that there be no more than two people in the restrooms. Uh, there are, uh, there's hand sanitizer. If you don't have a mask, there's extra masks over there. Um, everything's set up. A um, couple of things. We have actually a lot of announcements, a lot of things coming up for the fall ministry season. Uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., we have our monthly uh, Zoom prayer meeting. And so Pastor Nick is going to send out uh, an email that's also on our, our website as well as a push notification on your phone to remind you of that tomorrow night. So that's at 7 p.m., 7 to 7.45 p.m. Uh, Wednesday nights we've been meeting at the Bayshore Waterfront from 6.30 to 8 p.m. We've had some beautiful nights. And so uh, I think we're going to try and do that for one or two more times uh, for the remainder of the month of September. And so uh, take advantage of that while we still can. Coming up, we have a couple of special worship services. Next Sunday at, at 9 o'clock, we're still going to be meeting outside depending on the weather. And uh, we are going to break into groups. And we're really looking forward to it. And we're going to close our series on the Sermon on the Mount because the Sermon on the Mount is, is one of the most important sections in all of Scripture. And so we really want to make sure that we bring that together and we all have a, a good grasp and understanding of that. So uh, stay, make sure you show up next week. We're really looking forward to that. And then the following Sunday on September 27th, we're going to have baptisms. We have a number of people that have taken the step of uh, who want to take the step of obedience and being baptized in, in identifying with Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection and want to following a, and following after him with their entire life. And so we're really looking forward to that. And then the moment you've all been waiting for, Lord willing, we are planning on hopefully moving inside on October 4th. And so we're making plans right now. Yeah, praise God. We're making plans right now, Lord willing, to move back inside in the FMC uh, and having two services, 9 and 1045, beginning in October. And so there will be more details to follow. So make sure you look at your email. So a lot of stuff going on. And then last but not least, one of our beloved missions partners, Solutions Health and Pregnancy Center, they're having their Walk for Life. And uh, you can go ahead and go on their, their website for more details about that. Uh, we'll also email those out to you. But that's going to be on October 4th. And, and they're going to be walking from different locations. And you can register 
online for that. So like I said, a lot of things going on. We're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper this morning uh, at the end of the worship service. But right now, why don't we all stand together as we get ready to, to worship the Lord through songs. Okay, 1 Chronicles 29, verses 10 through 13. Praise be to you, Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. We ask that you'd wear your mask as we sing to the Lord. Let's sing to the Lord this morning and worship him with our very best. Thanks, Jared. Good morning, church. What's up? It's nice to see you guys. I'm excited to worship with you today. Cross 
where your love poured out Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down Rid me of myself, I belong to you Lead me Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself. I belong to you. Lead me. Lead me to the cross. Mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. So, my life, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful thank you Lord and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it keeps running after me. So my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. So my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing 
of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Yeah, lift up a shout. Come on, clap your hands. Let's go. We're here to worship the Lord, right? Amen. Okay, there I go. Okay. Well, hey, one of the ways we worship here at NNBC is through our giving, is through our tithes and offerings. And you're going to notice that on there's a table over there in the front and a table over there in the back. And that is for our tithes and offerings if you want to drop that off um, at the end of the service, if you haven't already. Another way you can give is online through our NNBC app or through our uh, website as well, NMB Church. Dot org. Uh, you can uh, set that up to give a one-time uh, tithe or offering or continual as well. So, so a lot of different ways uh, you can give and worship the Lord. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you now, and it is a privilege to worship you. We want to give you our very best. We want to worship you and with and give you all honor, glory. And praise. And so, Lord, as we have been in the Sermon on the Mount, we've seen your call of what it means to follow after you. That through the Beatitudes, you show us who your kingdom is for. That is for those that who have suffered, those who have been marginalized, Lord. It's for the brokenhearted. Because, Lord, you are described in the scriptures as a man of sorrows, that you went to the cross and dying for our sins. But Lord, you went willingly. And it is because you went willing, willingly, Lord, and you laid down our life for us, Lord, that we can receive your Holy Spirit, and now we can lay down our lives for others. We can show others the good news of the gospel, that while we are in this world, that there's so much chaos, there's so much uh, brokenness. There's so much nastiness that, Lord, we you call us to love our enemies, Lord. You call us to show others who are undeserving of kindness. You call us to show them mercy and grace because you showed us mercy and grace, that you loved us while we were your enemies. And so now we can love others. But we can only do that by your grace. We can only do that through the power of your spirit. We can only love you the way you deserve to be loved and love one another by your amazing grace. And so it is the good news of the gospel that we choose to saturate ourselves in and following after you. That we understand that the calling on our lives as your, as your, as your followers is to pick up our cross and follow after you. And that as we follow after you, we know that the road to following after you leads to the cross. But we also know that it leads to eternal life. And so it's that hope that we come to you this morning. And so, Father, I pray that you would heal our communities, you would heal our uh, nation, you, that you would just heal our, our world, that we would be able to come together and know peace, and that the only way we can know peace is through the Prince of Peace. And so, Father, we lay all of these things down at your feet. And so, Father, I pray that you would be with Pastor Nick this morning, as he comes to deliver your word. And Father, I pray that, that your Holy Spirit would work in the hearts and the minds of each and every person that listened to this message. So Lord, be with Pastor Nick now. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, New Mammoth. It is good to be with you this morning. This might make a little noise. 
No noise, good. Cool. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Thank you, worship team, thank you, AV. Thank you for those who've set up so faithfully. This has been a season where it's required a little extra work, but it's worth it, isn't it? We get to be together. We get to celebrate Christ our King together. And so it is. It's good to be together this morning. This morning we are going to wrap up our sermon series in the Sermon on the Mount. And when I say that, we have a, 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 another week where we're going to discuss the Sermon on the Mount. But this week we are going to conclude the text found in Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7. And uh, for those of us who have been coming uh, week in and week out, we've been plugging in. Uh, we remember that Jesus was speaking to his disciples, those who are following after him. They've left everything and they said, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. These are not just people that have passed by and are listening to him speak. This sermon is spoken to those who have left everything to follow closely after Jesus. And as we kicked off this series, we looked specifically in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Jesus uh, teaches, he says this, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' standard of righteousness was beyond the, the scribes and the Pharisees, what the Jewish people had exalted. That was the standard. Jesus taught and pointed to the fact that it is his righteousness that, uh, that they are to live for. That it is, is Jesus' righteousness that is needed to access the kingdom of heaven. That it was perfection, and perfection could only be attained through God himself, Jesus Christ. It's not only was Christ instructing his followers to acknowledge that it is his righteousness that grants access to the kingdom of heaven, but through the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus points his followers to the fact that they were created to flourish in a fallen world. That if you were to listen to his teaching and then live it out, that you would flourish in this world that is fallen and broken. That people around you would see and they would ask, how is it possible that you have hope in hopelessness? How, how is it possible that you're living in such a way that doesn't point to yourself over and over again, but in fact you say, this is for God, this is for God, this is for God. That you have a focus that's very different than this world. And the reason why that is, is because as Jesus is calling us to usher in the kingdom of, of heaven with him, He's instructing his followers that it's not about the external, but rather he is after our hearts. He's after our hearts. That the people of God are, are called to flourish in this perishing world because they're grounded in upside down values. Things that do not make sense to the eye of, an, of a non-believer. Things that don't make sense that we, uh, we love supernaturally. That we're even tempered and we're not given to anger. That we're not won over by uh, things that are pleasing to the eye and pursuing the things that are lustful in the flesh. That, that, that our marriages are grounded in trust and fidelity and mutual respect. That we serve and love one another. We see that uh, th at, the, at the apex of this is that we're not quick to repay evil with evil. But rather we're called to love our enemies just as Christ has loved those who were actively sinning against him. And so this text, this thing that we've been studying for the past three and a half months, to learn all of this, to just sit underneath this teaching, to just allow the word of God to sit over us, it's, it's really for those who, who really want the kingdom of heaven and are sick of the kingdom of this fallen world. That you've acknowledged, I don't want anything to do with this. In fact, you're ready to forfeit your citizenship. I don't want to be a part of the kingdom of this fallen world anymore. I want to live for Christ in the kingdom that he has brought because I know that no worldly pleasure is better, that following Jesus is greater. The call of, that Jesus has on our life and for those who have decided to follow after him is a full surrender. Following Jesus is difficult because everything and everyone around you is swept up by our emotions, aren't we? We live by what we feel and our feelings are liars. The distractions to seek for personal glory. The reality that the path to righteousness is narrow and few will find it as Jesus teaches. 
Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is not a church growth sermon series. We did not anticipate to teach this and then just to see uh, people be like, oh, yeah, this is really difficult. I want to I follow Jesus. This kind of thins out the crowd. But in thinning out the crowd, it strengthens the whole. That Christ is calling people to the fact that if you're going to follow him, you're going to live with reckless abandon. You are going to set your focus on him. And Jesus draws the line in the sand for his followers to be all in. So at NBC, sitting underneath the word of God week in and week out in this series and studying uh, exactly what Jesus is instructing, are we all in? Have we allowed the Holy Spirit to cut us to the heart? Or have we just created the, the rat race of our religiosity, showing up on a Sunday, hearing a sermon, going back to what we're doing? We're listening, we're hearing, but putting that to action no. Are we all in? Have we acknowledged that to follow after Jesus is better than anything else? It's greater than anything else. As a means to close out his sermon, it is masterfully done. Jesus uses an illustration. He closes with a parable. Many people have done this in their teaching. Maybe you've had this experience. Your child calls from the other room and they're screaming bloody murder. You run in. And they're fine. They were just a little lonely. just wanted to see you. You go back inside. They scream again, bloody murder. You go back in. And then you begin to tell them, do not do this. Because there's going to be a time where you need me. And I'm going to disregard your screams. Because that's what you created as a habit. And then you, after teaching them that, after telling them that, that's your instruction, you tell them a story, don't you? There was a little boy crying a wolf. You remember the story? This is Jesus' this is Jesus's technique right here. Is that he is telling a story to hit home everything he has taught. That this is not just to be heard, to be listened to, to sit under lecture, but do it. Live it out. It will change everything in your life. It will change your family, your community. It will be amazing to see the difference that only God can transform. Jesus is making, making sure his disciples leave with this story. And he wraps this sermon up. Let's read together in Matthew chapter 5. Oh, sorry, chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. But before we do so, we're going to, be, we're going to start in verse 24. But before we do so, let's pray. Well, Father, we, we thank you for this time together. And we thank you for the sun. And we thank you for how the, the, the rain is no more. We pray that you keep it cool that you not allow any distraction during this time together to take our eyes off you. That you would allow us, Lord, not just to hear today, but as we look through your word, as you taught so masterfully, that you would prompt our hearts, only you can do this, to live it out. To take bold steps of obedience and trusting you. And so just be with us now, God. Allow uh, your word to jump off the pages. Holy Spirit, cut us to the heart. And would we represent you well in this community to see your kingdom of heaven reign forever and ever. We pray in Christ's name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 7. Let's read together. Verse 24. I'll read. You can listen. Uh, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching as one who had authority, and not as their scribes. And so as Jesus finally leaves us with his story to live it out, he leaves us with something that all of us today can really understand. Building a house. Now there's probably very few of us that could actually do that task. But we have HGTV, YouTube. If anything breaks, we go straight to those things. We try to watch it, and we try to do our own thing, right? And what's true, if we want to talk metaphorically, is that we're all building a house, aren't we? We're building our lives, our business. 
We're building, we're building character, character traits into our children, into our families. We are, fo- we are focused constantly on building, on making things visible, taking basic things and constructing, making them uh, exist bef- longer than what we will be when we're alive. And Jesus, Jesus chooses uh, to build what is most important. A builder must be skilled and hardworking and prepared with plans uh, and the necessary tools to carry out the job. And so in verse 24, Jesus instructs, he says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them. Hearing Jesus' words and does them. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, remember, the people who have left everything to follow him. Anyone who hears his words has already made the decision to follow him, right? They're there. They're with him, sitting underneath his teaching. But the problem is, and he knows this, is that not everyone who hears Jesus' words will put them to action. Amen? With this parable, Jesus is wrapping up his sermon by saying this, and I love it because it kind of fits New Jersey. It kind of fits who we are. Ready? You heard my teaching... Now, what are you going to do about it? You've heard me ramble for two and a half, not ramble, sorry, Jesus. You heard me teach (laughs) for three chapters here. Long teaching cuts you to the heart. But what are you going to do about it? Sure you heard, sure you know. Too many have focused on the external being play actors as we saw Jesus call out the hypocrites, the Pharisees of the day. We remember that he is after our hearts, not just our actions. The call of a true disciple of Christ is to walk in wisdom. After hearing Christ's words, we see over and over and over again in the scriptures that to pursue wisdom, to seek it out, is more valuable. Proverbs 16, 16 says, it's more valuable than gold. To pursue wisdom. That wisdom is applied knowledge. You could have all the brains you want, but if you don't live it out, you're not wise. You're foolish. Jesus shares that those who hear his words and does them, they're wise. But those who don't do them, it's like building your house on sand. That all the scriptures point to seek after wisdom. That the entirety of the scriptures point to Jesus. That the Bible is Jesus-focused. It's getting us to Jesus. And so for all of us here, the followers of God, we need to set our eyes on the one that obtains all wisdom. And that is Jesus. Sorry, Dom. In this passage, we we identify uh, that there are two builders. And we see that the, a person who does uh, is wise, and the person who just knows is not. The two builders knew the words of Jesus, both of them. They were instructed and given, but they were not mutually applied. Instead of living in wisdom, the person who built his house on the sand proceeded in folly. Ephesians chapter 5 says this, verses 15 through 17. Look carefully then on how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what, will, what the will of the Lord is. It is the foolish disciple that hears Christ's instruction and decides to live according to their own understanding and their own fallen desires. I heard what you said, but I'm going to do what I think is best for myself and not live out your instruction. Ezekiel chapter 33 says this, verse 31, and they, can't, they, and they come to you as people come, and they sit before you as my people, and they hear what you say, but they will not do it. For with the lustful talk of their mouths, They act. Their heart is set on their own gain. And isn't that true? That that war that rages within us, that desire to follow God, but you know what? We're won over to the fallen world that we live in, and our heart has been impacted by Jesus. We've decided to follow, but you know what? I'm just going to listen to the teaching, and I'm not going to live it out. 
our hearts need to be won over to the good news of Jesus. That it is Jesus' words that point your heart to action. That we need to develop life-giving dis disciplines. And that we need to see the distractions of this fallen world slip away. And that only comes by making greater Jesus and focusing our hearts and our lives on him daily. James chapter 1 says this, But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. There is so much pain and brokenness. There is so much hurt. And you know what? We see in our own lives, we've decided to follow Jesus, but man, we could be pretty foolish. We know what would bring peace. We know what would bring life-giving uh, blessing to our family and those around us. But you know what we decide? Our fallen hearts win the day. And we live in foolishness over and over and over again. Jesus' words here are important. Each and every Sunday, it is possible to come and to listen and then to leave. And to be just like the world. Except the one thing you say is Jesus has really good teachings. Have we lived them out? Jesus' words to instruct his disciples to action that whatever we would build will last. Do you know why they will last? Because of the foundation for which they're built on. Many of you know that, that Andy and I uh, have gotten to travel to Italy. I talk about it as often as I can because it stole my heart. I love it so much. I want to be there right now, even though I'm, I really love being with you. And in Italy, as we've traveled... We've just seen the most beautiful thing after the most beautiful thing. We've really enjoyed our time there. But whether you have been there or not, and I hope if you haven't, you get there one day, that there is a structure that you might be familiar with. It's found in a town called Pisa. Do you know what that building's called? The Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's actually not called the Leaning Tower of Pisa. That's just what it does. But, but truly, that tower is a bell tower to a cathedral in the town in the city of Pisa and the reason why that tower leans is because the word Pisa is a Greek word and that word means marsh land and if you were to build a tall structure on marshland guess what will happen to the foundation it will slip it will move it will not be solid and the builders way back when did not know that. In fact, if you ever talk to anybody who's gotten to tour Italy at all, don't go to Pisa because you will see leaning towers throughout the entire country. That there are leaning buildings, leaning structures all over the place. Don't make a special trip just to go to Pisa. The two opposing foundations that we see in Jesus' parable are determined by what, how that building will last or how it will come to destruction. Both will experience severe storms. Did you see that? The rain, the flooding, the wind, that affects both structures. But the determining factor of the strength of the whole building rests on the foundation. Both homes are incredibly pr impressive, probably from the ground up. You look at it and you go, wow, that's really nice. But it is about the security of the building rests on its foundation. Have we witnessed, as we build the houses in this lifetime, any storms? Literally, we have in this area. We've, we've our Irene and Sandy, of course. We've seen the destruction that comes with, I mean, it's, it says rain and flooding and wind. It sounds like a hurricane to me. But what about in our own personal lives? Have our craftsmanship been put to the test? Living and enjoying the beauty of the Jersey Shore, getting to go out and enjoy, going on the, on the beach and standing around. Can we, do we notice that sand is a really bad foundation? You just have to stand by where the waves break just for a little bit of time till you see the, that you move, that the ground moves, that it is not where you want to put a structure. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says this, verse 11, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If your foundation is anything other than the word of God found in Christ, the solid rock, 
you have built your house on sand. The storms will come in your life. They will, they will test your building. They will test your craftsmanship. And we build our lives on our success, on the car we drive, the, the most futile things, because they are not what has been meant to build your life on. Good things cannot bear the weight of a good relationship with the Holy God. They crush. They shatter. They slip. The foundation is not set. And so let's do, uh, let's do a quick inspection on the foundations of our, of our lives. Let's, can we do that? If anybody has sold or purchased a home, we know that uh, a, a, a home inspection is, is kind of grueling. Kind of raises your blood pressure a little bit. You're waiting to make sure that everything comes back just fine. And the, the home inspection is designed to find things that the, the eye just can't see. It's not on the surface level. You're looking to make sure that the structure as a whole is solid. And that always goes back down to the foundation. And so Jesus' disciples, they're on the mount, and those that have been sitting week after week underneath his teaching, us. Let's just, let's just do a, a quick thing. Let's just determine whether we have established our lives on the rock. If we, were to, if we were to answer this question, what right or merit gives us the access to the kingdom of heaven that Jesus is ushering in, how would we answer that? What right or merit gives us access to the kingdom that Jesus is ushering in? Is it because you're a pretty good person? Because you do the right things? Because you know what? You, you, you care about your friends and you do good by them and your spouse and you, you, you provide for your family and you, you, you give to the needy, you attend church. And not only the things you do, it's the things you don't do. I don't cheat. I don't steal. There's so many people. If you got an hour, let me tell you about some of the wicked people in my life. If there was a cosmic scale that would outweigh the good merit, the, the things that you have done that are right and noble, and then, of course, all of the bad things that you have done, and you acknowledge you're not perfect, you're confident that the good would outweigh the bad. And because of that, that's what should give me access. That's what should give me access to the kingdom of heaven. If that's your response this morning, please listen. You have built your house on sand. That foundation will crumble because everything that you have done does not make right your fallen relationship with the Holy God. That the only righteousness that makes us acceptable in the kingdom of heaven to enjoy a right relationship with God is Jesus Christ himself. That that is good news. That left alone, we cannot rescue ourselves. That everything about our lives, though we may do good things, it does not pay the, the price of our sin and our death. That the good news of the gospel, found in the Sermon on the Mount and found throughout the entirety of the scriptures is this. That Christ's righteousness is granted to all who believe in his sacrifice and paying the full penalty for sin, reconcile humanity to God. It has nothing to do with our own righteousness. It has nothing to do with our own effort. You and I have missed the mark. Our sin has, has, has tarnished us. Our sin has caused separation between us and a holy God. Our greatest need is to be made right with God. And guess what? God has so loved you. He has so loved you that Jesus died the judgment for your sin. That the sin, and he's died for the sins of the world. It's his righteousness, which is the only right standing that could grant you access to the kingdom of heaven. It's given freely by his grace through faith in Christ alone. There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we can stay away from that would make us acceptable by God. It is Jesus and Jesus alone that makes us righteous. And so everything else that we could possibly look at that foundation and say, hey, there's a crack here, there's a split here, there's, everything needs to be tested first and foremost by whether our righteousness is built on ourselves or it's put perfectly on Christ. There are things that you will see that are just because 
we have built our foundation on, on other things, on ourselves, on our own efforts, rather than Christ himself. That whether you are actively believing the gospel and you're submitting to, by faith into Jesus, that you would submit completely to his lordship, asking him to lead in your life. I, wa I want us to be just real with one another. It is not easy to build our, ho our, our houses on the rock. It's difficult. It requires, in it requires intense digging. Deeper and deeper. That you look around and you look around at the other houses... And you see how quickly they're going up and how nice they look. And you, you're, here you are in the pit digging deeper and deeper, trying to get to know the riches of God's grace. Deeper, excuse me, deeper and deeper. And there you're looking around and you're so distracted. I just want to be like, I'm just going to start building now. No, go to the rock. Get there. Dig deeper and deeper. Do not allow the, the structure to be compromised because you stopped. You got distracted. Get to the rock. To build our house on the rock requires this deep commitment to establish our lives and everything in it on the person, the words, and the work of Jesus. It will demand believing in the gospel for salvation and for sanctification. That what saves me continues to save me. That the areas of my unbelief or our need to be met with the thing that rescued me out of the pit. That I need to constantly proclaim to myself, this is what Jesus has come. This is your new identity. You're not that person anymore. That you need a community around you that locks arms with you. And it needs to be founded on the word, the rock, who is Jesus. That God's word is so important in this season and for the rest of your life that no truth is found outside of who God is and what he's done. It is found in Jesus. We will be tempted, as many are, to grow weary in this labor. It demands every bit of your attention. As the storms come and the foundation is put to the test, our character is revealed. And our faith in Jesus is on display front and center. Romans chapter 5 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God our, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained faith by access into this grace in which we, are sta which we stand. And we rejoice in hope for the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put, to, put us to shame. Because God's love has, poured, has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The storms are going to affect whether you have built your house on the rock or not. They're coming. But how you respond to the storm, your structure, will either stand strong, knowing that this storm will pass, that destruction may happen. Something might be blown off the house, but you know what? That's a thing. That everything is founded on the structure, on the rock. And so we rejoice in those difficult times because we know God is refining us. He's revealing to us areas that could, that could show us that we've made this our God, our families, our wealth, our, our things. That has nothing to do with living for the kingdom of heaven. So do we trust him this morning? Do we trust his words? Are we committed to begin to dig deeper? And dig deeper. And as we dig, I want to prepare you. You are going to find things that you don't like. Because before you started digging, you were just pushing. Things that were coming up in your life, you were just pushing things down. And you just hoped that you could have set the fence up in the nice house right on the flat. And we could have just ignored everything in the ground. But as you dig, God is going to reveal the garbage that you have been pushing down for years. Your pride, your ego your selfishness, your jealousy. You look at other people's things in their life and you want them for yourselves because you deserve it. You're more righteous than they are. And as you dig and as you dig and as you dig, the focus is to get to the rock, to focus on the word of God. Because remember, Jesus is after our hearts. He's not after what's just above the surface. Get to the foundation. 
Jesus, is, Jesus closes his Sermon on the Mount, and then uh, the Gospel of Matthew ends with this in, in chapter 7. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For his teaching, for, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. Those who heard Jesus' words were astonished. They were shocked. Do you hear how he's teaching? He's not teaching like all the other teachers we've heard. He's speaking with the authority of God. He's speaking with firm conviction. And as he speaks, we're faced with that question. What are we going to do about this? John chapter 6 says this. So Jesus said to the 12, Do you want to go away as well as he sees the crowd leave him? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words to eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you're the only holy God. Only you. We've heard the other words. We've tried to live the other ways. And it brings despair. The rains come. The waters flood. The wind comes. And the house gets tarnished. Only you have the words to eternal life. And so I praise God because many this season have trusted. Have said, I'm sick of living for the fallen world that we're stuck in. I want to live for the kingdom of God, and I'm not really sure. I know it's going to demand everything. I'm not really sure what this is going to look like. It is going to be difficult. It's not easy, but God has blessed you with the family around you to focus on Jesus, to build our lives on the rock that this world would hear. This, this community only has a couple more weeks to hear these sermons out loud outside, and then we're going inside in a couple weeks. So let, let me tell you something. Our neighbors need to know as we live out the word, not just the words that we speak, but the actions that we live out. And so Jesus tells us today, you've heard my teaching. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Have you made the decision to forfeit your citizenship in the kingdom of this fallen world and to trust in the fact that Christ's righteousness is the only way we can access the kingdom of heaven? Nothing through your own merit? If you believe that today, the word of God says that God will make you new. He will change your heart from as hard as a stone to as soft as flesh. And then he demands faithful obedience. That if you acknowledge him as greater, then you would live that way. That it's not just lip service and it's not just knowledge, but it comes out in wisdom and how you live. And so we have to get busy. We have to get busy. We have to start digging. Do you... Have a Bible in your house, or do you have 50 in your house that are on shelves and bookcases and open it. Spend sweet time with the Lord Jesus. It is his words, when applied, that is truly where the wise person lives. That's where the foundation is, the rock. When we listen to the Lord and apply it, and so that demands, that demands Bible study, that demands to continue to do what you're doing. Come on a Sunday and hear and be a blessing to those around you and serve. Do you truly want to know what it's like? It's take your eyes off yourself for just a moment and focus it on the needs of other people. Count them more important than your own self. You will begin to see how God is working in other people's lives and God will strengthen your own faith. And he'll remind you, I'm working in your life. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Keep digging. Keep trusting. Keep building. We always find time for things we love, don't we? I really hope that in this next season that God shows us more than anything else after he's been pursuing our heart in this season. Nothing's greater than Jesus. Can we find time? Can we allow other good things to not be a distraction? And focus our eyes on him. That's my hope. And so what's, what's so special about this morning is that this morning we have an opportunity for every single person here to respond to the grace of Christ. That we get to proclaim as a community, as the family of God, that it is not in my righteousness at all. It's completely done perfectly in Christ. And that's through the Lord's table. That, that the saints have, uh, since Christ has ascended into heaven, since he had his last meal with his followers, he said, as often as you come together, do this in remembrance of me. That we would remember as Christ's body was broken and as his blood was shed, it was for your forgiveness of sins. Nothing you did, completely for what he did. And so today, you may have never trusted in that until today. Today, I want you, 
I want you to raise your hand as the ushers make their way around and hand out the elements. I want you to say, this is for me. This is you stepping out and saying, Jesus has purchased me out of death and into life. If you have said that, and if you've said that for years, but you know what? You've heard a lot and you keep hearing and you keep hearing Jesus' instruction, but you know what? You're not living it out. I want you and all of us today to repent before a holy and good God and to ask the Lord to strip away the distractions from our lives and to allow us to live in obedience, following after him, that we would not settle on building our house even just a foot below the ground, but that we would dig deep into the riches of the gospel, that we would build it on the solid rock. As the old hymn says, all other ground, it's sinking sand. And so I'm going to ask the ushers to make their way around we're going, to have, we're going to spend a time in, in quiet reflection before the Lord. We're going to ask the Lord to, to just remind us of his love and his grace. And, and after a short time of, uh, of time with him in quiet, we're going to come back and we're going to celebrate communion together. Well, Lord, we come to you right now to lift high your name. And we remember, God, that in our imperfection, you met us and you died for us. And my sin and my shame, all of it was bared on you. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We acknowledge, God, that you are a God of grace and that as your body was broken and your blood was shed, that you did it for the glory of God and because you have set your affections on your creation. And so, Lord, we know that this, this can be such an empty ritual. But we ask, Lord, that you would point our hearts to you. That's what you're after. That we would fully know what a life of true surrender is. And that we would live for the kingdom of heaven. That the grips of the kingdom of this fallen world would lose its strength that Christ, you would build within us a greater desire as a people to make you known, that we would see people who are leading their lives to death be rescued out of the pit of death, and that it would be only because of your goodness. Lord, you have us here for such a time as this. We pray for, for your grace in this life. We pray that we would be faithfully obedient. And so the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please take and eat. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup of my new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please take the cup and drink. And as the worship team comes forward, please join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you did not leave us. But God, you rescued your love was put to action. And Lord, we acknowledge that you've rescued us out of death and we're completely yours from here on out. That we want to live completely for you. That we do not want to waste our time building on sand that will lead to destruction. But it is you, Christ, the solid rock, the foundation of your word, that we would live by your authority, that lives would be transformed in our household, in our community, in our jobs. First, start with us. Build us the boldness to follow you, to be obedient to your word. Jesus, you alone are good. We love you, God. We thank you. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Please stand and join me 
please place, put your face coverings on as we close in song. Thanks, Nick. Jesus is King, amen? amen? All right, this next song is called All Hail King Jesus. If you've been worshiping with, worshiping with us online prior to meeting in person, um, we sang this a couple times, so hopefully you're familiar with it. a moment when the lights went out when death had claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history There on the cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned, amen One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known for the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made Amen, yes As the heavens roared Oh, hail King Jesus Flash of light breaking through When all was lost he crossed eternity The king of life was on the move Yes Or in a dark cold tomb Where our Lord was laid one miraculous breath will forever change. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus, oh, hail the Savior of the world, oh, hail King Jesus, oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth, oh, hail King Jesus, oh,
just saying that Jesus is the Lord. He's the king of the kingdom that he has ushered in, the kingdom of heaven that will rule and reign forever and ever. If you have made that choice to follow Jesus today, I encourage you to come forward and to talk with myself or another one of the pastors or elders. I encourage you that if you have been coming here, as I heard someone earlier, you've been coming here for week and week and week and years and years, but you have never taken this walk seriously to go to myself, any of the leaders, and say, I want it. I want to follow after Jesus. That I want to build my house on the rock. It is a joy and a privilege to pastor this church, but it is a joy and a privilege above and beyond to know that it is about the kingdom of God. It's not about any person or any institution like this church. It's about Jesus. And so let's focus our eyes on him. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the glory that has been shown to us Christ our King, the risen Savior, that our hope is set before us. It's on you. And we know that this life is not easy. It will have storms. But God, we trust that as we build our lives on the rock, as we trust in you, that we would see our entire life, our family, our community be flipped upside down because Christ, there is life in you. And so God, be with us today. Allow us to enjoy sweet fellowship as we break down. And more importantly, Lord, would we start this week, even just to, to refresh ourselves, to start reading back Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Remind us of what you have taught us, and may we, by your grace, live it out. We trust that you would lead us in that. We pray in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a great, great week. Romans 12, 1 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. We are called to worship God with our very best in every area of our lives, and this includes our giving. As God's people, we aren't to give out of guilt or obligation, but are called to give to the Lord with joyful and generous hearts in light of the cross. We recognize that we can never outgive God. It is the greatest blessing and privilege to build up his church, to see his kingdom come, his will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. During this season, you can give to NMBC one of three ways. You can give safely and securely online through our website or free NMBC app. You can set up regular giving through your personal online banking, or you can give by mailing a personal check to our church office at 4 Cherry Tree Farm Road, Middletown, New Jersey, 07748. We thank you for your continued generosity in supporting the mission of God and the advancement of the gospel at NMBC.
We are so glad that you were able to join us this morning to worship the Lord Jesus together. We want to once again invite you to our church website at nmbchurch.org to connect with us so we can help walk alongside you in your spiritual journey. Whether it be a prayer request you may have, questions about the message you just listened to, or how to be a part of what the Lord is doing right here at NMBC. It's our desire to see you grow in your relationship with Jesus and for the Lord to be glorified here in Middletown, Monmouth County, and throughout the world. May the Lord continue to bless you and your family. Stay healthy and safe and have a fantastic week. God bless you. Before you leave, we encourage you to check out the links below, starting with our digital bulletin where you can connect and see everything that's going on at New Monmouth. If this is your first Sunday joining us, please fill out a connect card. We cannot wait to get in touch with you and share what God is doing through his people in New Monmouth. Join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. as we come together for an outdoor worship service. Be prepared with a lawn chair, a bottle of water, and a mask as we come together to make much of Jesus. Every Sunday morning this month, we encourage you to show your generosity by donating non-perishable goods to support our neighbors in need as we partner with Middletown Helps Its Own. We encourage you to join our missions committee as many NMBC members are committing to serve Thursdays at 12 p.m., putting together family baskets and delivering these boxes of love to our neighbors in need. God has created us to enjoy relationships. Join your church family every Wednesday night at 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Bayshore Waterfront Park in Port Monmouth for our beach nights throughout the summer. We encourage you to bring your own dinner and commit to spending time catching up with one another down by the water as long as the weather permits. We have missed gathering and enjoying quality time together for many weeks. We encourage you to join in, get connected, and enjoy fellowship with your brothers and sisters here at NNBC.